Okay, we should be back. Uh, is there audio? Hello? Yeah, there's audio. All right. Should we start? I guess so. All right, so the stream is on Mixer this time. Uh, so the stream is on Mixer this time. Uh, so if you would like to watch it, then in hashtag lecture, there's a link to the stream. You can log in with Discord, so it's pretty easy. Um, I'm going to mute myself on Discord because there's like, well, actually, I'm not going to mute myself on Discord. You guys should mute me for yourself on Discord. Is everybody ready? Okay. 13 viewers, let's go. Okay, for the people that can't listen on Mixer, there's Discord available as well. Uh, I'll send a link in chat right now. But that's probably where you all come from, so. Uh, okay, so the previous lecture was about object orientation in C++, right? And it was given by Not a Penguin, uh, so thank you for that. Um, so Not a Penguin talked about how constructors and destructors exist in C++, right? And how they're really meant to clean up after yourself, basically. And I, I quickly mentioned it, right, in um, in the in my first lecture. I quickly mentioned it as well. I was like, okay, so scopes exist, right? At the end of this scope, right? You're no longer able to use this, right? And then if if that would be heap allocated, right? So I say in pointer data is new int. And I give it the value five. Then this data would be lost here, but this memory would still be allocated, right? Um, so that would be an issue where where it's so called a memory leak, right? Where you literally leak memory. So I set up a basic class, right? Just ignore this. This is just so we can't do funky stuff and we don't get warnings, right? Basically, what happens is we get a we get a char pointer, right? We get we get our constructor data, which is which is just a string little literal, right? Um, it's just this, right? And, and we call the constructor and we say, okay, we'll get the length of that data and then allocate that data that many bytes on the heap and then we print it and then we copy over the data and then uh, that's it basically, right? And then if I run this, you'll get, okay, allocating 13 bytes, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, plus an invisible character that says, okay, the string is over, right? But then you never deallocate that data, right? So you get, okay, well, this is completely valid. It prints hello world, right? But you never destroy this data, basically. This data will forever stay on the heap until the operating system tells it to stop, right? So for that specific principle, for that specific issue, there's this thing invented that's called RAII, and it's typed like that, R-A-I-I, -I, quite literally, right? And all it says is basically, okay, well, any any limited resource that you use, such as uh, file streams or uh, memory, you should delete after yourself, you clean up after yourself, basically. So whenever you're done with it, you say, okay, well, I'm done with it now, so um, you can cease to exist, right? And that's exactly what we do here. So we allocate it in our uh, constructor, and then we say in our destructor, okay, delete that data now, right? Like we're done with it, destructor, is at the absolute end of the lifetime. So right here, here would uh, static string be called, right? It uses a tilde for uh, the structure syntax, but you can check out the previous lecture for that information, right? So now if we run this, we'll see, okay, allocating, right? Hello world, and then deleting data array, right? That is, that is the very basics of REII, right? It's literally just, okay, you clean up after yourself, right? Does everybody get that? Okay, just type in chat if you have an issue or if you don't get something, right? So that is the most basic example, right? And everything that we'll use today exists in the in the standard library as well. For example, this exists in the header string where we say, okay, const std string str is hello world, right? And it's, oh, let me comment this out instead, str.data. Right? You should get the exact same result. Hello world. Right? But the, the thing is, the convenient thing here is that the standard library takes, oh, I should not have clicked that, uh, my bad, um, is that the standard library takes, takes care of that for you. Right? Whereas with 
uh, your own string, you have to think about that yourself, which is, which is why we don't use the new keyword. Uh, we use something else. And that other thing is very closely related to what we did before, like, right? To what we did here. It's very close to it, except it's not a specialized purpose, right? Um, it's unique pointer. It's uh, in the header memory, and it's been introduced in C++ 11, if I recall correctly. Right? So uh, we say, okay, we have an SD unique pointer here, uh, and we'll give it the type, the internal type int. Uh, don't worry about this for now. It just says the data that's contained in the, uh, in the unique pointer is an integer, right? We'll, we'll get the templates next lecture, okay? Um, so we'll say, okay, unique pointer int, we call it x is uh, std make unique five, right? Oh, it's a function, so five, right? Now we have a unique pointer uh, with the value five, which contains an int, right? And now we can say, okay, how do you debug in Visual Studio? How do you add a breakpoint? Okay, whatever. Um, debug there. Right, and now we can see, okay, well, x is a unique pointer with value five, right? And it points to some address. We, we covered pointers in the first lecture, right? And we say, okay, well, the data that it points to is value five. And because we're debugging, we can change it, but we won't do that, right? You see, x is a unique pointer with value five, right? And then this heap allocates. It does basically the same thing as this here, and then it deletes when it's done with it, right? And the principle of a unique pointer is that only one thing can own this data, right? So there is only one thing that can point to this heap allocated data, right? You're not, you're not supposed to have multiple things pointing to it because then who owns it, right? Um, thinking of it in real world, term, in real world terms, say you have um, a, a ball, right? When you were a kid, you were playing with balls with your friends or whatever, right? Uh, and, and you had a ball, right? And um, you guys were playing together, right? And then at some point you were like, okay, well, I'm gonna take my ball home now, right? And that's exactly what a unique pointer is. It's you use it, and then when you're done with it, you, you clean it up, right? That's all that it is. Okay. That's, that's in very simple terms, a unique pointer, right? And I've set up a basic example to uh, show what it does, right? And it's a specialized case because we haven't had templates yet. Right, but it's just a unique integer pointer. So only one thing can ever point to this in pointer. Right? We say we have a value method, so we can get the value that's currently contained, and we can destroy it, and we can uh, construct it. Right? Keep allocating and deleting. Right? So then we go here. We say uh, unique int pointer. Right? We say unique int pointer. We call it x again, and we give it the value five. Right? And then this heap allocates, and then whenever it hits this, it gets destroyed. So let me add a breakpoint. Right. So we, we had heap allocating an int, right? And then we get here, we can see that the value is five. Right? And then whenever we step through, step over, right? Now it's deleting an int. Right? It's not what I did. It returns a pointer to data, uh, dereference data. Right, and now we can get the value by saying, okay, x dot value. Right, because we don't actually want anybody to access that internal pointer and be able to move it out, right? Uh, so for simplicity purposes, we just made it a reference to the value. Right, we had references also in the last lecture. Keep allocating an int, we say, okay, value is five, and then when I step over this again, oh, wrong one. And then when I step over this again, it'll say, right, it'll say, okay, deleting, right? Okay, so that's the principle of a unique pointer, right? And now, and now I can imagine that you think, okay, but what if I, if I do want multiple things to access one thing, right? Um, such a case does exist. It's, for example, when you're sharing data across threads. Well, we'll cover threads sometime soon, right? Um, we're not up to threads yet, but basically, um, if you do have to share data, then there's a thing called a share pointer, right? And I've set up a very basic example for that right now. And it's, it's essentially the same, except it's a counter, right? Um, we forgot to increment counter here. 
right? So what, what this does is um, every time that you copy over the pointer so that something else gets access to the internal data, right? It increases the counter by one. And then when the counter hits zero, aka when nothing uses it anymore, right? Because every time you destruct it, you call, uh, you, you decrement the counter again, right? And then every time you destruct it, you decrement it. And then when it hits zero, you delete the data, right? And we can illustrate this. Um, I think it's this one. Yeah, OK. So we have shared int pointer, right? Uh, shared, what's the pointer? I call it PTR for some reason when I called the other one. I forgot to mark everything public, right? We, we had this public stuff in the last lecture as well. Um, so let me set a breakpoint there, right? Um, okay, now we say we have another shared in pointer, and we say, okay, well, you're called y, but you you are x, basically, right? You're the exact same thing, and then we have a shared in pointer uh, z, and it's called, uh, and it's the same one as y again, right? And then here, when it actually gets destroyed, we'll say, okay, well, um, delete it. Right? And then we start it. And it says, okay, right? Everything is unknown. It doesn't know where counter is yet, right? So we step over and it says, okay, counter is here, stuff is here, right? And then we have Y, and then Y is the exact same data and the exact same counter, right? Right? There's nothing printed yet. I'll print allocations later. Um, Basically, okay, and then here, counter is a three, right? Because three things point to this value five, right? And then when we step over it again, then you see, okay, counter is now two, counter is now one, and then it deletes it because the counter is zero. That's what a share pointer is, right? Uh, you can imagine that it costs performance, right? Because you have to increment some number every time you copy stuff over, right? Um, and it does, it, it really does, and it costs quite a lot. But it is the only solution when you're dealing with something like sharing data across threads, right? Okay, and I hope everybody got that. Um, we, we can print allocations. We can say, okay, well, SCDC out, uh, allocating. Wow, that's an annoying plugin. Holy shit. Um, that's fine, though. Right? And we say, and you see, it's only allocating once. And then it counts to two, and then back to one, and then zero, and it deletes it, right? So it only allocates once, even though you have three things that use the data, right? And that's what a share pointer is. It's just um, the same variable, right? It's the same value in the same location, but it uses one counter, right? Uh, usually, you're not supposed to use a share pointer uh, because of the performance overhead. Yeah, it's it's not just a simple increments uh, like like I think not a penguin set um, but it's a thread safe increment right so so sharing this across threads is completely fine but we'll get into threading later um, some future lecture because that's actually a very big topic um, right and then there's one third type of smart pointer and it's a weak ref right and I haven't implemented it so I'll just use shared pointer for it right I'll say SD shared pointer in uh, uh, Actually, we'll say auto x is sd make shared, right? So we construct an int and we say, okay, you have value five, right? And then we say, okay, uh, sd weak pointer weak is x, basically. Should be int, right? Yeah. Uh, right, so so the difference between doing this and saying, okay, sd shared and pointer int is x, right? The difference between these two is that this one doesn't increment the counter, and whenever it destroys, it doesn't decrement the counter either, right? So if you do want to use shared pointers, but you can guarantee that this this will outlive the scope of this one, right? Then you're free to use a weak pointer because it doesn't cost you that specific performance overhead, right? That's the main issue with shared pointers. When sh when should I use a variable from the heap? Um, you should use a variable from the heap when when you don't know how the long lifetime it will will be. Uh, I'm actually going to mute Discord because people keep joining.
Okay, that's done. Uh, you should use a variable from the heap when you don't know how long something will live, right? Um, right, I'm I, I will actually use a threading example. Right. Yeah, I'll use a thread example even though it might not be that smart. And let's go initial thread, right? And we say, okay, so we construct a thread for this method, right? Just just ignore this syntax for now. Um, this is just a point uh, function that returns zero, right? And we say, okay, uh, you see out the value, right? We, we capture x, so we say, okay, you also have access to x, right? And we say, okay, x dot. Uh, we say, okay, x is value, print it, please. Right? And say we do this in a, in a scope, right? So at the end here, yeah, I should. Oof. Right. So we so we say okay. We we say okay. We have this thread here, right? And we have a. And we have a shared pointer that we create here, but then we also want that thread to use it, right? And then we have a weak pointer in here, which which is called y. And then we say, okay, but y is also x. That's not smart. Never mind. Right? And then we when we hit the end of this, right? This will get destroyed. So the counter will decrement. But the thing is, this one still has access to it, right? So the counter is still one even though the actual value has been destructed, the initial value, right? And then when we hit here, we say, okay, well, wait for the thread. The, like, the actual threading is not important right now. It's, uh, right, just wait for this to finish, right? And then, and then the program can gracefully exit, right? So if you now run this, this will be completely fine, right? It says value five as we expected, okay? Completely fine. This is one of the cases where you would use heap allocated data because you don't know exactly how long you'll need x to live right basically if you want it to possibly live longer than its current scope you use heap allocated data if you know exactly how long it lives you use stack but if your data structure is too large then you also use heap allocated data and there's one more case in which you use a heap allocated data and it's when you don't know how much data you'll actually use right let me, I should have lit it with that example because it's way easier. So we have a vector of ints, right? Right, and now we say, okay, well, let's have a loop that randomly loops between 0 and 49 times, right? And now we say, okay, well, let's stop push back. We say rand modulo 50. So we, we push a random number back. Uh, actually, let's just push back i, right? And then scc out x dot size, right? Now we can run this a few times. And the first time is three, and then the second time is also three because MSVC is garbage. Did the stream die? Right, stream is fine. Okay, well, since since the random doesn't work that well every time, we say, okay, y, right? And then we take input and we say, okay, y. Uh, right, and since there is no way for the compiler to tell how many elements you'll input in your console, right, this will be a random amount as the compiler is concerned, right? So we say, okay, add 500 elements and then you see the size is 500 right and then we can hit it and we can say okay well now we want uh, 69 elements right and then you see okay it has 69 elements right because you up front you don't know how many elements will be in the vector and therefore you use heap allocated data because you can resize it i hope that was clear okay Honestly, I feel like I've covered everything I needed to cover. Uh, that was a very short lecture, a 20 minute lecture. We covered a lot of information in a very short time. We even dipped into threading. Mm, that wasn't my intention, but we got a good question. 
Right. So to recap, you use heap allocated data when you either don't know how much data you'll need, or your data is too big, or you don't know how long it'll live, right? And then which which pointer, which smart pointer or container you use, that's dependent on your situation. Uh, unique pointer guarantees that only one thing can own the data. Shared pointer guarantees that multiple things can own the data, and it'll only get destroyed whenever everything is done with it, so you don't get uh, uh, invalid heap usage, basically, like um, accessing memory you don't own. Uh, and weak pointer is um, for combined a combination with shared pointers basically it's like um, a non-owning shared pointer so it doesn't increment that internal counter that was a very short lecture but honestly it's a very short topic um, it's it's really not that hard to understand um, the thing that C++ enforces with RAII is basically okay clean up after yourself um, and that's all it is and I hope that was clear and I wasn't recording so I have to just rip the VOD afterwards uh, but I'll upload this to YouTube as well in case you want to rewatch it that was basically it wow that was really fast 20 minutes okay all right well next lecture will be about templates I think and it'll be given by not a penguin uh, we'll see when it'll be given right thank you all for watching I'll upload this to YouTube as soon as it's available have a good day